But do you know what these drops even do? The most common way to treat glaucoma is with eye drops. But for those with advanced cases or those who don't want to take drops on a daily basis, there are other options like oral medications, laser surgeries, and surgeries that involve implants. But often, people with those treatments still need to use drops anyway. But do you know what these drops even do? Well, today I'll be covering how and why glaucoma drops work. To understand the treatments, first we need to understand what is actually happening in glaucoma. Glaucoma is actually really complicated, and even the top researchers out there don't have a complete grasp on it. There are many different types of glaucoma, some due to the underlying anatomy of the eye, and others due to systemic diseases like diabetes. Though reduced blood flow to the optic nerve can be involved, for the most part we can think of glaucoma as the pressure in the eye being too high, mostly because of blocked drainage. Regardless of the cause or type of glaucoma, the goal is always to reduce the pressure from wherever it started. You may want to think of eye pressure as something like tire pressure, except where the tire is filled with air, the eye is filled with fluid. The back of the eye is filled with more of a jelly-like substance called the vitreous. The front of the eye has fluid that circulates through it called the aqueous, and that's what we're talking about in glaucoma. The eye needs this fluid to give it oxygen and help it keep its shape. Just like a tire, you don't want the eye pressure to be too high or too low. If it's too low, the eye can collapse, but if it's too high, the pressure actually pushes back onto the optic nerve, causing vision loss. That's glaucoma. If you're looking for a little more detail or you were just diagnosed with glaucoma and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, I would recommend checking out my comprehensive video about glaucoma here. Now let's think of the eye like a sink and an eye with glaucoma as a sink that is overflowing. If we wanna stop the overflow, we can either turn down the faucet or expand the size of the drain. That is what topical treatments or glaucoma eye drops aim to do. Some turn down the faucet, some expand the drain, and some even do a little bit of both. The faucet in the eye's case is where the aqueous is produced, which is here in the ciliary body. It's kind of in line with the lens. The fluid enters between the lens and the back of the iris. It travels through the pupil and ends up in this space between the front of the iris and the back of the cornea. Then it has to exit in this tiny little corner here between the iris and the back of the cornea. This area has the trabecular meshwork, which acts as the drain. And it's very well named because it is like a mesh. So the fluid has to go between these mesh-like spaces. And this is where most of the blockage tends to happen. There are way too many drops out there to cover them all. And I'm confident there will be new ones available in the future. So I'm going to simplify things and break them down into categories. And I will put a link in the description of an excellent resource that lists all of the drops within their categories. That way you can see what drops you're taking, what category they fit into, and a list of side effects that they also have there. I will be discussing some of the side effects here today, but keep in mind it is not a comprehensive list and you should always discuss these things with your provider. Let's start with the most commonly used drops out there. That would be prostaglandins. They increase the outflow of fluid from the eye, but they use a route other than the trabecular meshwork that we were talking about. It actually follows through a uveoscleral pathway, which means that it goes through the ciliary body and it ends up in the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, and goes from there to the lymphatic system. These have long been a first line treatment because they are usually quite successful at lowering the eye pressure significantly. Though they do tend to have some funky side effects like increasing the length of eyelashes, changing the color of the iris, and sometimes darkening the skin around the eyes. Topical beta blockers, on the other hand, work by reducing the production of aqueous fluid. They've also long been a first or second line treatment for glaucoma. They can cause some systemic side effects like reduced blood pressure, reduced pulse rate, and fatigue. So those with a history of respiratory or heart disease should take particular caution. I'll talk more about systemic side effects and how to try to reduce them a little later. Topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors also work by reducing the production of aqueous fluid. 
When the drops are instilled, they can cause stinging, burning, and ocular discomfort. Topical alpha agonists work by reducing the production of fluid and by increasing the outflow through that uveoscleral pathway we talked about earlier when discussing prostaglandins. They can cause some stinging and irritation with drop installation, as well as fatigue, dry nose, and dry mouth. Rho kinase inhibitors are relatively new to the scene, and they function in a different way than what we've ever seen with any other drops before. They work by increasing outflow through the trabecular meshwork by reducing the stiffness of the cells located there and in other structures, and by reducing adhesions between cells and other structures as well. They can cause some irritation with installation, as well as small bleeds in the white part of the eye and corneal deposits. Cholinergic or meiotic drops function by increasing the outflow of fluid through the trabecular meshwork by constricting the pupil. That can affect night vision or vision in dim circumstances, so these aren't commonly used. Eye care providers will always determine a target eye pressure based on the severity of the glaucoma and the starting eye pressure. For some, they may not reach their target eye pressure with one drop alone and may need to combine two or more drops to get the desired eye pressure lowering in order to properly protect the eye from the damages of glaucoma. Fortunately, since these drops act on different parts of the aqueous production and drainage system, they can be used in combination to lower the pressure more significantly. But we do have to weigh patient compliance in on that because the more drops you add into the mix, the more it is to keep track of. And it can be difficult because some drops need to be used at the same time of day, but they need to be separated by at least five minutes for the drop to fully absorb and work to its full potential. So you can imagine how that would be pretty difficult to do. Fortunately, there are drops that combine two drops within the same bottle. This gives the benefit of both medications with increased convenience and possibly fewer side effects. Most eye drops can cause side effects of redness, irritation, or stinging. And usually this is due to the preservative. Fortunately, there are some drops available for glaucoma that have a more mild preservative or no preservative at all. But unfortunately, these often are more expensive, but it's worth discussing with your provider if that's a concern that you have. Some drops do have unique ocular side effects like possibly changing the color of your iris or increasing the length of your lashes like we talked about earlier for the prostaglandins. There are also systemic side effects that you should keep in mind. The good thing about most eye drops is that they tend to stay primarily in the eye and don't often make their way into the bloodstream in a significant way that can cause systemic side effects. However, it is possible. So your doctor may recommend punctal occlusion where you hold down for two minutes the puncta, which is the exit route for the eye drops leaving the eye. Sharing your full medical history with your eye care provider is so important to make sure that they don't prescribe something that could put your health at risk. An example would be prescribing a beta blocker to someone with severe heart disease as it could lead to heart failure. I'm a huge proponent of people taking greater control of their own health. I highly encourage you to continue watching and reading about side effects and contraindications and discussing any concerns you may have with your provider. The risk versus benefit of any medication should be discussed with your doctor, especially if you have a condition that could contraindicate the use of that medication. Ultimately, it's between you and your doctor to determine what drop will work best for you based on the severity and type of glaucoma, target eye pressure, ocular and systemic side effects, contraindications, cost, and unique personal needs. Since glaucoma is a chronic condition that requires lifelong treatment, it's important that each individual find a treatment plan that works best for them, protecting their vision while reducing side effects to maintain quality of life. I hope this gives you a better understanding of what drops are out there, what drops you may be taking, and how best to manage your glaucoma with your doctor. Remember to keep learning to best protect yourself and your vision. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.